This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Kyle and Monty Teeter discuss Teeter Irrigation's Dragon Line technology. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer visiting with Monty Teeter. Monty has been with Teeter Irrigation for 40 years, but in recent times, Monty, you've developed a new technology for center pivot irrigation that is probably as revolutionary as center pivot is. Can you explain it to us? I sure can. Uh, when I say uh, uh, we came up with the idea, it's an idea that's been around for many years, but it's never been able to be perfected. Uh, because of the time and uh, situation of the products that have been made, but uh, upon the, the invention of the pressure compensating emitter, which means uh, you remove your regulators and nozzles from a pivot, and uh, when you reach six PSI in the tubing, it delivers the exact amount of water to each emitter out there on the system, regardless of elevation. So when that was developed, uh, it took about four years to get the product made for me, the style that we needed, a year to uh, try to get someone to try it. And without anyone uh, taking that up because we didn't have it proven that it would really work, uh, we bought a farm with just 200 gallons a minute on two circles, and we set off to uh, try that and to, to prove that it worked. And we've grown four corn crops now from that and three wheat crops. The uh, Truly, the technology um, is relatively simple after they develop the pressure um, compensating emitter. Basically, as you're at the center of the pivot, the hoses are shorter than out at the end. That's true. The length of the hose dictates the amount of water flow that's is delivered to the field. So at the start, uh, some of the tubing may only be a foot long, and at the end it could be uh, up to 100 feet long, depending on the application of the GPM of the system. Now you talked about wells as small as 200 gallons a minute, um, but if you have more, you can put on more, or it just isn't necessary at all? Well, we believe that you can use uh, 30 to 40 percent less water and get the same yield, that almost the same yield. And K-State's done a good job of uh, promoting this or proving what we uh, have said. Um, we only have 200 gallons a minute on our farm, and we're, we're raising uh, over 230, 40 bushel corn. Um, so with saying that, uh, uh, people that have 600 gallons a minute could probably raise almost two circles if they have uh, tight soil. Uh, sandier soil, of course, would be a little less, but... Uh, when you think about the savings of 20 to 30 percent of the water in the whole area of uh, southwest Kansas, it would be a huge number that would extend our aquifer many, many years. Even after they developed the, the emitter for you, though, or you adapted that technology, there was still some tweaking that had to be done to fit the questions and the needs of the producers. At this point, you've pretty much addressed all of those things. Yes, we've, dis we've developed four different styles of uh, application of our unit, uh, of the using the use of Dragon Line from a high profile to a low profile to accommodate any crop. Uh, we uh, have addressed being able to reverse uh, with the system without kinking the tubing. Uh, we can water down to 10 degrees without shutting off because on low application wells we need to water in the wintertime. Uh, we keep the water off the foliage. Uh, we deliver fertilizer directly to the soil. Uh, so we just reduce all the evaporation and sun loss and wind loss that you normally would have. Uh, so I guess in a sense, we bank water rather than evaporate it water. That's in a sense, that's what we do. We're visiting with Monty Teeter. He's with Dragon Line or Teeter Irrigation in southwest Kansas. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Folks, stay tuned for more Farm Factor after these words from our sponsors. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. 